Welcome to the channel. So I don't normally start my videos like this where I'm already halfway through it, but as I was doing this change um, to my KP3S here, I thought, hmm, this might be a good teaching moment, so let's make a video. Anyway, so the problem I have here is that I was printing some minis, this one right here, and I was getting some crazy stringing. If you can see that right there and I just could not get rid of it. So I thought, okay, well, let's take the hot end apart and see what we got. Well, one of the things I thought when you got a KP3S Pro was that it had an all hot metal, or sorry, all metal hot end, and that's not the case. So here's the throat, heat break, whatever you want to call it. And this is the little bit of PTFE tubing that goes inside it. And mine was all kinds of nasty. Anyway, so that was my problem. And if you've got some stringing that you can't get rid of on your KP3S, this might be your problem. So anyway, this little bit goes right in there. And as you can see, mine's kind of a little bit melted. Um, it's a little nasty and that was causing some friction and just some overall bad behavior. So they do make an all metal throat, which you got here. There's the part number for it. They were relatively cheap. And again, I, I thought, you know, part of the pro in this was that it came with an all metal hot end. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be replacing um, our throat, heat break, whatever you want to call it, with this new all metal one. And you can see they're identical. Just one has a little bit of PTFE in it and one doesn't. Not 100% why, sure why they did it that way, but that's how they did it. But anyway, um, in order to get to this point, just take the video in reverse and you'll be able to get yours apart to replace this. Now, there's a couple of bad decisions that were made when they designed this thing. And one of them is that when you screw this in, it doesn't actually go in all the way. And there actually is a gap between the end of the threads in the um, heat exchanger itself and the throat. And so that leaves a gap up at the top. And that gap, you can actually get stuff in. So here you can see the difference. There's, there's a little bit of a gap right there. And you can actually get um, filament stuck in there. Um, for that reason, I'm not gonna use any paste to make it easier to remove the heat exchanger. So here you can see that's as far in as it goes, right? And then if we take our old one and we compare that, you can see that we've got a bit of a gap. And again, that, that gap, you know, it's, it's open space in there for filament to collect. So anyway, again, uh, the point is I'm not gonna use any paste on this. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here to get this all back together is we want to take our heating element, our heat block, and we want to put our nozzle in it and screw it all the way down. And then once we bottom out on it, we're going to back it out a turn. So we have a little bit of a gap. You can see it's all bottomed out. We want to turn it and we should see a gap between the block itself and the nozzle. Let me zoom in there. See that gap? And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now that we have our gap set on our nozzle, now we're going to take our new all metal heat brake and we're going to screw it in all the way 
until it makes contact with that nozzle. Get it tight. And what we'll do is we'll come back, we'll heat everything up, and then we'll tighten our nozzle. And then that should make everything good and, and tight at this point. So both of these should be butting up against each other at this point. Now just get everything finger tight. You, you don't want to put a wrench on it yet. We're going to heat it up for that. And moving on. Okay, so now this is the real easy part. We're just going to screw this thing on. Now normally you would put paste on these threads and when you you know put your heat exchanger on so that way you get good uh, thermal bonding but we don't want to do that here because i want to be able to take this heat exchanger back off if i ever need to clean out the top of it so just put it on get it tight and we should be good to go make sure everything is snug finger tight and like I said, and then once we get everything in, we'll heat it up and then we'll do our final torquing on the nozzle. All right, moving on to the next step. Okay, so now it's time to actually start putting our extruder back together. I wanted to take a second to note the orientation of this. Now you have a round section and then you have like this little gusset, this triangular gusset that gusset is going to go towards you. So when you slide this in, you need to make sure that you've aligned it right. Okay, so now make sure your little blue piece of PTFE tube is still in this little plastic part of the throat here or the extruder. And then we're going to take our hot end assembly and then go ahead and slide it into place, into the groove. Make sure you hit that groove. And then we'll take our other piece, and again, make sure your blue is in there, and just slide it into place. And then we'll push the entire assembly all the way in. And there you have it. Now make sure you know you're you're centered up here. So everything's straight. And be careful not to loosen everything up. Make sure it's all still tight. And that's pretty much it. Now, you know, here's your plate that we're going to put on. Note that the little screw goes in the bottom right corner and one of the great things about this setup though is that it, it is super easy to work on super super easy to work on so we just go ahead and orient our plate get our screws going and then tighten them up And like I said, it's, it's super, super simple to work on this setup. And that's really good. Um, I just wish they hadn't done some of the things that they did in their design of it. That gap kind of, I don't really like that. I mean, it is at the top and you know, so then you're, you're really gonna have to have some crazy retraction going on um, to get something stuck up in there. But I mean, it is possible that, you know, when you're pulling your filament out, that a chunk of it pops off in that gap and then it's kind of stuck there. And then you have to disassemble everything to get it all back together or get it back working. But anyway, once we get these screws put in and tightened, you know, and don't go gorilla arming it, just get them tight, get them stuck. Then our extruder setup is finished and we can move on to putting our fan on. All right. Now this one is pretty simple. It's just take the fan and you want to have the wiring at the top. And then we just put it over our heat exchanger and it just snaps on. 
which again, you know, the, the setup for this. The overall design I like, just some of the points I don't. And again, we want our wire on the top. Okay, moving on to our last bit is now we need to install our cover. And you know, this is pretty super simple. It just slides on and then we have the screws on the sides that we need to put in. We find them. Leave it kind of loose. We get the other screw. You might have to move it around a little bit, reposition to get it to go in. We've got one more on this side. So all in all, I mean, again, a, a fairly simple task to do. Moving on. All right, and lastly, we just need to plug in our extruder motor and we are back assembled. And our next step is we will move on to tightening the nozzle and um, testing out that everything works the way that it should and we are good to go again like I said this it's a relatively easy process to replace this um, and it's probably not a bad idea to do it anyway all right so now at this point go ahead and heat up your unit to 260 and then hold on to the block uh, don't use a pair of pliers like I have here get a box in wrench I couldn't find mine so this is just what I had on hand once it's at temperature, just give it a little bit of a turn, you know, a little bit of torque. You don't need to gorilla arm this thing and, you know, do full rotations on it because you will snap it. But then we should be good to go. You should have gotten rid of any gap in there and we can actually do some test prints. Okay, so before we actually do anything, we need to adjust our Z end stop. So we want to move our hot end as close as we can to our bed. And then if it is making contact with the stop first, go ahead and rotate it down. And if it's touching the bed and the stop hasn't you know, tripped yet, go ahead and raise your end stop up. And once all that's done, then we can go through with adjusting our bed, you know, making sure everything is flat um, before we actually do a test print. Okay, so now that we've got our end stop adjusted, let's go ahead and make sure all of our four corners are correct, you know, height-wise, so that our bed is nice and level. And remember, anytime you make a change to your hot end, uh, this is a process that you're going to need to go through. And then once we've verified everything is level, we will go ahead and do our first print, which will be the mini that was having problems before. All right, so finally, we are at the end here where we will reprint our mini and hopefully this time it will show up much better. And actually with this uh, all metal hot end, I did end up changing my retraction. Uh, it's now 0.3 millimeters at 40 millimeters per second. It was 0.4 before. Okay, so here's our little mini. Now this one, as you can see, looks way better than our first one did. There's still a tiny bit of stringing. You can see where the nozzle, you know, the last point the nozzle touched, left a little bit there, but that should pop right off. And there's a little tiny wisp right between his legs there. But other than that, he's very clean. All right, good deal. So um, I hope you found this video useful. 
And if you did, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.